I'm Lucas Parra, I'm professor of biomedical engineering at the City College of New York. Um, we have been working in the lab for quite some time uh, on um, eye gaze and um, to understand where people look at when they're looking at an image, when they're searching for an object, what happens if they miss an object and so on. And in the process came to think that um, the point of gaze is really a good indication of what you're interested in, what you'd like to look at, where you want to maybe zoom in, uh, focus on. And so we thought that maybe instead of using eye gaze as a what it's naturally biologically an input device, use it as an output device as a means of determining what the person is interested in, uh, which direction maybe they want to move, what object they want to look at in more detail. So eye control has been looked at quite a bit in the past and in, in, in the devices that are available usually end up being um, costly. The, the lab equipment we have used for uh, psychophysical studies is in the thousands of dollars as a matter of fact around forty thousand dollars obviously that's no, nobody's going to be able to use it but with the cameras that are now mounted basically on every laptop computer you can envision a, a, a low-cost system that continuously monitors your eyes and does something in response to it in fact there are uh, coming up there are a bunch of startup companies that have um, uh, uh, low-cost devices that they're envisioning for for um, uh, detecting the point of gaze um, I think the really, to, to me, the interesting question is what are the applications where the point of case really is a meaningful, um, and a meaningful um, a bit of information in terms of interaction of the computer or a device with the user. My name is John Itakla. I'm a biomedical engineering student here at CCNY. Um, my project is on eye control. Eye control is basically the concept of using someone's eyes as an output device. In this case, what we're trying to do is use a user's eyes to control a drone. The AR drone is capable of moving anywhere in 3D space. It can move up, it can move down, left, right, and the user can control the drone with just their eyes. So when they look left, it moves left. When they look right, it moves right. Natural user interface. Now that's the concept behind eye control. When Microsoft brought out the Kinect, that in itself is the perfect example of a natural user interface. Though a little bit hard to use, you're waving your hands around this com camera that sees your, your hands and your body. So basically you can control the Xbox, you can control it by waving your hands around. Similarly, touchscreen phones, that's also a very natural user interface. When you interact with the world, normally you go and grasp or touch objects when you speak with someone when you're conversing. Could you imagine in the future we're capable of talking to computers by just talking to them? Though we have systems like that now, they're not 100% perfect, but hopefully by a couple of years from now, these systems will be much better. So what is the next step in natural user interface? Well, we at CCNY believe it's eye control. Eye control, unlike brain-computer interfaces, you, the user doesn't have to wear anything on their head. It's a remote device that's tracking their eyes. So they're capable of controlling any type of interface by just looking at it. If they look at something, maybe the computer can tell, it, tell that user what they're looking at or respond by giving the user cues. Maybe it can control something else. Now that's the concept behind eye control as a natural user interface. We use our eyes to interact with the world at all times. Maybe we can read behaviors from where the eye is looking, what the eye is doing at a certain time, gestures based on eye movements. Now that is something cool. So as a biomedical engineer, uh, we're always interested in, in, uh, in medical applications. So where eye gaze can be used or has been, has been used in the past is for people that are paralyzed, so that don't have full control of, of their arms and hands. And so you want to come up with another method of how they can interact with the world. And um, 
And um, in fact, in our lab, we're working on something that is called brain-computer interface. The notion is that you uh, record signals from the brain and with that control a robotic device, say a cursor on the screen or move a wheelchair. Um, what we found with this brain-computer interface technology is that the signals um, that we record uh, really have a low bit rate. That is, the amount of information you can extract in a certain moment of time is perhaps limited. But uh, subjects that are, uh, with disabilities, they really have perfect control of the eyes, they're perfectly normal in that sense. And so um, it seems very natural then to use eye gaze as a way of, uh, of uh, uh, controlling movement, so for instance moving a wheelchair or moving a cursor on the screen for subjects that are paralyzed. So that's that's one context in which we've looked at that case control.